डॉक्टर रोहित शर्मा जी आए हुए हैं इनके पांच लेक्चर्स ड्यू हैं हमारे इस पूरे कार्यक्रम में आप सभी ध्यान रखें कि इनके जो लेक्चर्स हैं उन लेक्चर्स पे हर लेक्चर्स पे इन लेक्चर का इंडिविजुअली गूगल फॉर्म बेस्ड एक टेस्ट आपको जो है दिया जाएगा सभी को आपको उन सभी गूगल फेम बॉस बेस्ड जो जो फॉर्मेट है उसको भर करके उसमें क्वेश्चंस होंगे उनका रिप्लाई सबमिट करना होगा एंड दैट विल बी इवेल्युएटेड एंड दैट विल बी इवेल्युएटेड एंड सीन बाय ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर सर तो बी कॉशियस बी अलर्ट बी प्रेजेंट इन द इन द इन द लेक्चर विद योर होल माइंड ओके इसी के साथ हम अभी आज का कार्यक्रम शुरू करते हैं डॉक्टर खुशबू प्लीज कम ऑन मैम आपका Today we have privilege and honor of having a special guest with us renowned in the field Professor Sushmita Jha ma'am from Department of Bioscience and Bio Engineering IIT Jodhpur who has a wealth of knowledge and experience in art of crafting and compelling an impactful article please welcome with a round of applause very good afternoon to all of you um thank you again for giving me this opportunity to present to you um yesterday after my talk i had a few students come to me and ask about you talked about research articles but what about reviews how do we write reviews so today i thought i'll talk to you a little bit about how to approach writing a review and i think Uh, a review essentially ends up being the first article that we write when you're starting out scientific publications because you're reading a lot of papers you end up uh, summarizing that knowledge and i think it's a good idea to when you start think why not summarize all that i have read and try to publish it as a review right so for my phd students when they start their research what i try to tell them is in the first year when you are mostly doing course work um, and you're just reading the field why not come out with a tangible result of that and produce a review so we'll today talk about why should you write a review article and how do you go about it as usual i would like for you to ask me questions and we'll try to keep a, a discussion open throughout so um, why write a review article right so there are many reasons why you should be writing a review article uh, first is of course that you want to provide a comprehensive foundation on this topic the second is you want to explain what is the current state of the art the third is you've been able to identify gaps in the field and uh, you can actually suggest what are the existing studies and what could be potential future directions and the fourth is to highlight methodologies so recently we've had many new methodologies in the field and if you'd like to summarize how these add to the field in the con in contrast to what was existing previously then you can also write a review about that so before you begin 
writing a review, there are certain things that you should keep in mind. The first is always what is the purpose of you writing this review. Now this is very important because unlike a research article where you kind of start out with the end in sight, you know what you want to talk about, for a review it can sometimes end up that you know you are just reading research articles endlessly and you've read many many research articles and you just don't know where to stop, right? So you want to make sure that when you start out, you know what is the purpose of this research article. Why do I really want of this review? Why do I want to write this review? Second, what is it based on? Third, how is it going to be written? Fourth, how, what does it report? And finally, how long should this be? Now this ends up being a very tricky issue, the last one, because many times people overshoot on the, um, on the word count because you've read so many papers and you want to talk about all of them but you have a word limit and you want to make sure that you stay within that word limit. So let's start with the first one. What is the purpose? So the first and most important purpose of a review is to critically analyze what is previously published and in a particular domain, you can't be very very broad too. Now, sometimes it could be that you have been invited by an editor to provide a unique perspective. In that case, your job is a little bit easier because you already know what you're going to be writing about. But most of the times, if you start writing a review, you want to be very sure that you have uh, looked at what is going to be the boundaries of your review. So when you say, what is it based on? We say, it has to be based on existing published articles. It does not report any of your original research. You might see a couple of review papers which will have a statement, this is part of our unpublished data. Well, that is not really professional. You should keep those statements for research articles. Reviews are for reviewing, critically analyzing, and therefore they are known as secondary literature. How is it written? Typically, you will be invited for or you will decide to focus on a specific topic. You will summarize your existing literature on that topic and then you will try to present the current state of the art. Now, what is important here is what does a review report? So it reports commonalities between the results of chosen studies and we'll see how you can actually come up with these commonalities. How do you come up with a structure that helps you write these commonalities? Because it can get daunting uh, and uh, in, in sometimes I think for newer students who've just started reading research papers, just the fact that you're reading a research paper is daunting and then to summarize many research papers you almost feel like everything that is published must be perfect. There is nothing further from the truth. So when you're writing a review, you want to critically analyze the data and you want to make sure that only those data that you are truly convinced by make into it. So you identify reports that have commonalities between results. You make sure that you also report discrepancies. So what are the things that are actually conflicting? And so you want to make sure that you highlight if there are controversies in the field. What are the things that people don't agree upon? Why do you need to report that? You need to report that because that opens the field up for other people who are starting out to realize, oh, this might be an opportunity for me. Okay, so for any written document, a scientific written document, the idea is not just to communicate, but also to kind of broaden the field for other people. And then the last point which gets to be a little bit trickier is to have a balanced perspective. Sometimes we end up having a biased perspective. So we need to be very aware of our biases and we want to make sure that we analyze all the data available, all the published work, make sure that we analyze them critically Make sure that we also say where are the gaps in the knowledge. Now at this point of time, please don't think that I've only been in the field for this many years, who am I to report these gaps? Please don't. That's, that is counterproductive 
to you writing a review. So your goal is to understand the field. If you see gaps, you report them, right? How long should it be is the most common question that I get. Now this depends on the journal that you're planning for. Many a times, PG students start out by researching a particular problem and then they've read a certain number of papers, say 50, and they'll want to summarize them. Now you can't end up writing 6,000, 7,000, 11,000 words and say, this is a review. You have to then decide which journal do I go for, right? What is the scope of my work? How focused is it? So how long should it be? Typically 3,000 to 5,000 words. If you go longer, please make sure that you find out which journal are you planning to publish in. Sometimes a longer or relatively short review uh, might be published depending on the journal. If you've been invited, they might make the length flexible. But you have to make sure that you look at the journal guidelines, right? So make sure that you look at the scope of the journal and journal guidelines. How many of you here have actually tried to look for a journal to write a review or write an article in? Out of the students, anybody who's tried to write a paper yet? Okay, so this is a good starting point, I guess. So we are beginning to write uh, these kind of papers. So when you start to write a review, the most important point is to look at the papers and prepare a reading grid. Okay, now this is just one way to do this. This is not a way, if it doesn't fit for you, you can make your own way. Uh, one of my students makes a 250 word summary of every single paper that she reads. That is a really nice way to do it. You can always keep it in your referencing library as well. This is one of the most common ways of doing it. So you make a reading grid in which you have your papers that you're planning to write about. You talk about the research topic or question that the paper is talking about. You look at the methodology that they have used. You look at their findings. You look at limitations of their research. Now this is tricky because many a times people will not overtly say this is my limitation. Good papers will. Good papers will say this is the technique we used and these are the limitations of my study. So I used a mouse model and of course we used it as a model which could be extended to human disease but it may not be identical, physiologically relevant to a human subject. Okay? So good papers will but you want to make sure that you have to critically analyze what are the limitations of that paper. And then finally areas for future research. So like we discussed yesterday. Um, in research manuscripts, you will end up finding what are the future directions during, in your discussion as well as when you are discussing every result. So uh, as you are reading a research paper, you have to summarize these. So here in the table, you can see that uh, the person is trying to write a paper about how Facebook is affecting their CGPA and they are actually summarizing different papers in the field and how they went about it. And there are just five here. So what you could do is have an Excel sheet that summarizes all the papers that you're trying to read. I'm just using this as a way that you can summarize your paper. Different people might want to summarize their papers differently. Okay, But the idea is that you have at least these five or six points covered so that when you start to write your review, you have these handy. You have them available. So how do you start writing an introduction? Now just like yesterday, what we'll do is we will take a typical introduction and we'll dissect it out and say this is an easy placeholder, this is an easy way to write it down. Okay? So let's look at one. So you start out with a topic sentence. That topic sentence should be able to tell you this review is going to focus on these major themes. Okay. Now the goal of a research paper and the goal of a review are very different. 
The goal of a research paper is to tell the field this is a new discovery that is resulting from my experiments. The goal of a review is to summarize the field. And for your review to then be successful, the parameter is, what is the parameter for a successful review? How do you assess that a review has been widely accepted by the field? Anybody? There are no wrong answers here. I'm not assessing this talk. So anybody can answer? Have you talked about, uh, you must have heard about citation indices, right? So you can look at the citations that a review gets and that is typically a good indicator of if the field and if it has been really helpful, it has been accepted by people in the field, right? So good review will have good number of citations. So then the goal for your review should be that many people should be reading my and reading and citing my review, right? So when you start out a review, you should be thinking about the person who's reading that review. Most of the times, who are the people who are re reading a review? Are they established researchers in the field? No, most of the times the people who are reading the review are students who are starting out. So do they want to have really complicated language confusing them? Absolutely not. So you want to start with a statement that summarizes what they're going to get. That is actually a rule that I follow even for research papers. You want to start with what will you find in this publication. So you start out with a summary statement that says, in this review, you're going to find these five different things that we'll talk about. Okay, and then you go about talking about them. So you have five major themes mentioned here. You can go about with whatever you want to do. And then you start framing your review around those five major themes. Now, unlike yesterday's talk, I cannot have a fixed format for a review because most journals will have their own formats. So what I'm going to do is, we have a format for how the information has to be communicated, but we'll just go by paragraphs then, okay? So now let's look at how do you write a paragraph for a review. In this case, you have a topic sentence which talks about what are the details which are being, or the key points which are being addressed by that particular uh, paragraph. So, you'll probably start with a statement from the field because you want to give context always. You want to say, and also I think it's a good idea to say, um, kind of give respect to the people who came before you, right? So um, you talk about the research that has already been done and you say in the literature, it has been uh, kind of, it has been um, shown that, and then you put in your reference and talk about that paper now. So what are you going to talk about? You're going to talk about how that paper conducted the experiment, how if you agree or disagree with it, so your points in it, which is extremely important. Your analysis is very important because um, that also ensures that you your review ends up cited more, right? And finally, a concluding statement. So you're literally going through your review in every single theme. So in this case, we started out with five broad themes. In those five broad themes, you'll divide up the papers that you have studied. You will divide them up and discuss them as paragraphs, with each of them contributing to how it kind of moved the field forward, how it showed a particular gap, and how now you are weaving a story with it. I hope everybody understands this. If there are any questions, please stop me and we'll uh, tackle the questions right then. What is daunting for most students and even for faculty is how do you synthesize literature, which is so wide and now with so many platforms to publish, there are so many papers being published. How do you decide and synthesize papers and into, into themes. So I've said five themes. How do I 
put them into themes and say, these are the only ones that I'm going to be talking about. A little trick that I would like to mention here is, you can always in your acknowledgement section or always in your closing remarks mention that because of limitation of space, we were not able to cite everybody who has done work in this field. That way you're being inclusive and you're making sure that nobody is hurt because you did not cite their research. Okay, so you start out by introducing a recurring theme, you position research findings, you talk about those research findings in detail, so you talk about the methods they use, if you agree or disagree with them, if those methods were sufficient or not, you talk about the gaps that are available and then you say how this is significant. Now this ends up being the meat of your literature review you will end up having at least 10 paragraphs like this, right? And then, finally, you will talk about identifying the limitations as well as future research. So this ends up being the final part of your review. So you're talking about, you're talking about looking at specific limitations. So if I'm working on, say, patient-derived organoids, uh, I can say the limitations of using mice is this, the limitations of using just cell culture are these, the limitations of using um, human subjects are these, and therefore I chose to use this model system. So you want to specify the limitation, say it out loud, then you talk about the impact of the limitation, why is this limitation significant? Then you talk about future research and finally you talk about possible contributions. So every single time you have to make sure that there is an analysis that is part of it. You can't merely state a paper, that is not a review. Merely compiling research papers is maybe published but it will not be cited as highly. Okay. In some cases, as you're citing these papers, you will also be asked to include an annotated bibliography. Now an annotated bibliography is where every single paper that you have written about, you have to write details about it, right? So how do you write an annotated bibliography? So this is extremely important because sometimes those bibliographies are where students will be going to look for which is the paper in the field that has for the first time reported this, right? So an annotated bibliography then talks about a particular reference. It says, this is the description of the paper. This is what was talked about in the paper. It gives a short statement of the author's viewpoint, okay? Now the author's viewpoint might not be the field's viewpoint, it might not be your viewpoint, but you want to write it that it is the author's viewpoint or this is the summary from the author. And then it evaluates what was said based on your conclusions and finally you have a link to the different findings. Any questions at this point? No questions yet. No, you can. So you can, uh, you can submit your views as well. So after you talked about the author's viewpoint, in the evaluate section, you talk about your. So you talk about if there are limitations, you talk about that. If you think it is the first paper, you talk about that. Many a times, if it is a new field, there is a lot of tussle into who is the first paper that talked about something. So then you want to, you don't want to get into those uh, chronological assessments, but you definitely want to say in this paper they use this technique to come up with this conclusion. The next paper, they use this technique to come up with your conclusions, but you have to, you always have to come up with your viewpoint. Any questions from students? Okay. 
Okay, so what we'll do now is, again, just like yesterday, we will go to our writing resources. So these are all of the writing resources because yesterday I think I had a lot of students ask me um, about the presentation. Of course, we'll be sharing the presentation. That's not a problem. I've also seen that pretty much every slide is getting photographed. So you don't need to worry about photographing those slides. We, you will get the presentations as a PDF. And these are actually websites that I think uh, anybody who's trying to write papers or uh, any kind of communication writes it. Another thing that I just realized I missed out on is uh, sometimes you might not have been asked to write a review but you want to submit a review. In that case what do you do? The best way to do go about it is rather than submitting your review to a paper and waiting for it to get rejected promptly, it is a good idea to actually uh, send in a pre-submission inquiry. Okay. A pre-submission inquiry is a letter to the editor that you write with just the abstract of your review saying I would like to publish this review in your journal. This is what I plan to cover in the review. Please let me know if this is suitable for your journal or not. Now this saves a lot of your time because otherwise you will be waiting for a reviewer for your paper and sometimes after a month the paper comes back rejected with someone saying this doesn't fall within the scope of the paper, okay? So it's always a good idea to have a um, uh, pre-submission inquiry sent to the editor, okay? Uh, that's it. I think I finished ahead of time, so we'll be in time for lunch. Um, uh, as usual, you can follow our lab's research on the lab website. And uh, thank you to the lab alumni, as well as IIT Jodhpur for all the support. And thank you for your attention. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Madam. I would like to, uh, I would like you to highlight what is the basic difference between a systematic review and a review article. Because most of the time when you are reviewing an article, you may end up in reviewing the methodology also. Right. And as in a medical right. student, basically this is the area we are afraid of most of the times. Right. So can you highlight that? So I would, again, I would suggest if you are planning, so this is a systematic review of a methodology, right? I think that is a different process altogether. So that would require another talk from my side. Um, or maybe what I could do is share some articles about it. But uh, that is a different set of things altogether. What I talked about today is mostly writing a review on a particular topic, not really methodologies. But a systematic review ends up being something that will get cited by, uh, for example, in the cancer field. You will end up talking about overall survivals, right? You will talk about treatment plans, paradigms, shifts in, in uh, the way that medications are given. So all of that becomes, uh, it has to be categorized differently. So when we are writing a review article, uh, even though we are not going into details of methodology or the analysis part, but the result may be varying between the articles because of that methodology. So can we highlight that? Or absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I don't think you cannot put the methodology. In fact, what I mentioned was you should definitely talk about the methodology because then you realize um, what are the limitations of that particular study, right? Or what are the things that that study covered which uh, some other study was able to kind of complement or add to. And uh, so methodologies have to be discussed. Just that when you are looking at reviews for methodologies only, that focus is different. Then it's much more detailed. You end up having much more granularity in terms of the, uh, in terms of tables that you're talking about, different treatments, plans, things like that, procedures, which you will not have in a typical review paper. Yeah. And does the time framing of the articles which we are selecting to review is important? I, so what 
I have never really thought about the time frame of the reviews unless it is something that is really so recent that I have to restrict myself. So recently we submitted a review in Nature Reviews uh, Immunology. Uh, it was published in Nature Reviews Immunology where uh, we basically summarized two decades of work in the field of innate immunity. So because it is a new field, I can say, oh, I'll only restrict myself to those two uh, decades. But if I'm talking about something which is like a disease pathophysiology, I might, might start with the discovery of those cells which, were, which started out the field, which might be 200 years back, and uh, that gives context to how far the field has come. So I think unless you've been asked to only focus on this time frame, it might be a good idea to have some context, but of course, nobody wants to read 10-year-old papers in a review, so you want to discuss those, but you would like to focus on the future always. Right. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. और कोई किसी की क्वेरी हो तो पूछ सकते हैं अभी एनी बडी एल्स ठीक है डॉक्टर खुशबू थैंक यू मैम On the behalf of everyone present here, I would like to express a sincere appreciation for your time and effort in delivering such an outstanding lecture, ma'am. Your contribution has left a lasting Im impact. We are grateful for the knowledge you have imparted. Thank you once again for your exceptional presentation, ma'am. Now, I would like to request Professor Nilima, ma'am, Head of Department, Sri Rog and Prasuti Vibhag, for a vote of thanks. A very good afternoon to all, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor and dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, and my dear students. Today, I would like, like to thank the Vice Chancellor, sir, for giving us the opportunity to listen to all these things. I think it is, it will be a tedious job for us to go through searching all the books and uh, the material from the internet and I thank Madam for giving a comprehensive uh, uh, material today. I think there is no need to go further to read. That tedious job has been reduced and thank for giving the elaborate uh, uh, material on the annotated bibliography. We, the researchers, if at all we can write or read all these bibliographies, we can frame the research proposals in a very easier fashion. And I would like to thank all the faculty members PG scholars and BMS scholars for patient listening and thank you Madam for uh, giving, you, giving us the precious information before. Thank you one and all.
Now, I would like to request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to please present the token of honor to Professor Shushmita Jha, ma'am. So with this, uh, yes, uh, second session of Samaap Hota Hai. And this ke baad mein ab lunch rehega. Lunch ke baad mein next session hamara... <laughs> hamara next session jo hai, uh, 2.15 pe start hoga. 2.15, aap sab log sharp yaha a jayenge, 2.15 next session start ho jayega. Thank you very much.